Hello guys, Colin here. Just in the middle of filming some other videos, some more complex videos, and they're throwing me a lot of trouble. Um, so they're gonna take a little bit longer than expected. But while the camera's rolling, I thought maybe it'd be a good idea to talk you through my guitar collection. I think that's something that you might be interested in. So I've got all these guitars behind me here, and we're gonna talk through them today, sort of in the sequence that I acquired them, hopefully, if I can remember. It's been a while. This bright orange beauty is a Squire Bullet Special and it's the first electric guitar that I ever owned. I got this around late 2006, so it's been over 10 years that I've had it. This is a cheap entry level guitar, but it's very well constructed. Squire stuff's always pretty solidly put together despite um, the low budget. This guitar originally consisted of one bridge humbucker and a single volume control. That was it. Nice and simple for beginners. And to be honest with you, it sounded pretty crap. Uh, the pickup wasn't all that great and there wasn't very much flexibility in the electronics. Also some of the hardware, like the tuners and various, just weren't very good. So I decided the first thing I need to do with it is uh, upgrade it. So I changed out the tuners to these Grover inlines, which are much, much better tuners than the little plastic black ones it had originally. Changed out the bridge humbucker to a Seymour Duncan Invader and included a tone control at that point in time. That gave me a lot more flexibility, down-tuned it, and it became my heavy metal guitar. Over time, I decided I needed more pickups and to turn this into some sort of a super strat. So I went for some bare knuckles. This is a painkiller humbucker in the neck and a slow hand single coil in the middle position. I added a five-way switch, and there we have it. The guitar is pretty much good. Some strap locks on there as well, and it's a solid guitar. I gigged this guitar. This was um, my main guitar until I built myself a guitar, and then I used it as a backup instrument. The new pickups certainly help it sound a lot better, but it will never compete with a expensive, well-made instrument. The only thing that still needs done on this guitar is to change out the bridge. That's the stock bridge and as you can see the strings uh, go through the bridge and not through the body and I want to change that. I want to get a good quality brass bridge and have the strings come through the body and that's the best the guitar can possibly ever be at that point. So then I'll be completely happy. Um, but I, I love this guitar, I'll never get rid of it. Um, it's just such a great trustworthy, roadworthy instrument and I, I absolutely adore it. The next guitar that came into my possession was this Thruneck Stratocaster, custom built thing. One of my dad's friend's sons was building this guitar many, many years ago and it was left in bits, an uncompleted project. And when I started playing guitar, they asked if I wanted to have a look at it and see if I could put it all back together. And I said, yeah, sure fire it over. So this guitar is pretty much the reason why I got into modifications and building and repairing guitars. Everything that I know, I sort of learned from trying to put this thing back together. When I came into possession of this guitar, I had a black pit guard custom cut thing with Damasio pickups and a very strange wiring system that I could never get to work and clearly never could the original owner as they abandoned the project. Just recently, I've added this new pit guard. This is a laser engraved uh, weird science uh, pit guard from Flat Exotic Products. They watched the channel and sent me along as a gift, so thank you very much for that. It looks great and fits great. So this is new pickups, all the ones that I've wound, uh, my own strap pickups. Volume tone and a five-way switch to make it more like a real strap. It's got a Kalar traditional bridge system, so it's got these springs and claws in the back the same way a standard strap bridge would, um, but it works really well. It's also got the locking nut at the top there. Goto tuners, um, and as I say, it's a through neck uh, construction. It's mahogany wings and a maple and mahogany neck through portion. So it's a very heavy strap. It's probably the heaviest strap in existence. Um, but it sounds great and it's got great sustain because of the through neck construction. And I, I really like this guitar. I'm glad that it's now working. And I'm also very thankful for everything that I've learned from this instrument. Um, I refretted this. I've learned electronics and all about hardware and all sorts of things. So, you know, this has been a learning experience for me and again, it's set up now to act like a genuine Stratocaster. So I'm happy with it. Now we talked all about this in a video dedicated to it just recently, but this is the Ibanez Zyphus. And this is the first guitar that I bought brand new from a guitar shop. The Squire was second hand um, from a chap I met at uni and the Strat again was handed across to me so I could try and get it to work. Uh, this one, however, was hanging up in a guitar shop and I thought I'm gonna try that, see how it goes and walked out the shop with it. Absolutely loved the thing. So this is another neck through construction, again, maple with the mahogany wings. Damasio deactivator humbuckers on there, nice hot output humbuckers, and the Ibanez Edge 
whichever Edge series bridge that is. So it's got the whole thing for the shred, the shred, 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 24 frets, locking nut, the whole lot. Uh, as I say, if you want to go and watch the video where I talk about this in full, uh, you can do so. Link will be there. Please go and click it. But that was the next guitar I purchased, and I played the shit out of this. This is where it gets all a little bit blurry. I came into a lot of guitars over a very short period of time. I can't remember which ones uh, came before the others, but I think it might have been this one that was the next one. This is an Ibanez ART in white. I purchased this off of a chap called Adam Jerome, who is in a very great band called uh, 48 Hours, if you want to go and check them out. When I bought this off him, he was in his previous band, uh, Colt 44, who also were excellent. He's just a really great musician and works with other great musicians. Uh, so this was his guitar, and he was sitting on it, and I thought, hey, I'm going to get a shot of that. That looks great. Um, so it had been gigged, it had been a little bit bashed up because Adam likes to throw things around a bit. Um, but when I got this it had active pickups and there's a couple of videos very early on in the channel of me swapping out those active pickups for passive ones. Currently there's a wizard pickup in the bridge and one of my own Super 10s in the neck position. Changed out all the electronics of course to go along with the active to passive upgrade. Got a kill switch in there, again you can watch that video if you want to see how to install a kill switch from Iron Age Accessories uh, who also do very great things like uh, switches and uh, guitar picks and all sorts of areas, so please go and check them out. Also changed out the stock tuners to Grover tuners. Again, there's another video on that. This guitar has featured in a lot of videos on the channel, you'll have seen this one. I'll just put a list of videos that you can go and watch uh, with this guitar in it. But yeah, I think this is a really great guitar, really solid. I wanted something at the time a bit more Les Paul-like, because I've got a few strats and got the Xyphus. I wanted something shorter scale length, a couple of humbuckers, a bit more a bit more Les Poth, just something, you know, in your mind you've got to have one of each. Um, but I tried, a, I tried a Les Paul and didn't like how thick the neck was and all that sort of stuff. I tried this one and thought, hey, great! And uh, then when I saw Adam was actually selling one, I thought, hey, I'll just pick up one off of you, second hand support you, give you a bit of money. So, that's uh, the Ibanez ART. You'll probably see a lot of this, because this has turned into my modding guitar. If I'm ever doing modifications, it gets done to this thing. Um, mahogany construction, mahogany body, mahogany neck set in, and it's got a little maple veneer underneath this white. I found that out when I was drilling out for the uh, for the kill switch. So, if I ever want to take off that white, there might be a nice little... Um, a nice little figured maple cap under there because I think they did some of these in trans finishes. So it'll just all be the same guitar with different finishes so there might be some sort of a, a figured maple underneath that. But I think I'll leave it with a white. I really like that that look and if um, it's great for on stage really. Great for cameras. It's that sort of off-white way. Another great guitar. We'll get this filthy bastard out of the way next. This is Shite Paul, and if you've been a long time viewer of the channel, you've seen the Shite Paul series, um, where I picked this up from a shop in Glasgow called Victor Morris, and if anyone who was ever in Victor Morris when it was still open, um, you'll know exactly what sort of downright scummy place that was. But they were closing down, and they were chucking out a whole bunch of guitars and stuff that had been sitting down in their basement since the 80s, proper beat up, destroyed uh, stuff. So we went in that day and we picked a whole bunch of amps and guitars and whatnot for basically no money at all. And within that there was some there was some good guitars. Aria Pro 2, which I refinished and gave to a friend a couple of years ago. Video on that on the channel. Uh, there was also a Sun Mustang and a few others. But this was amongst them. There was a couple of really, really cheap, awful uh, Les Paul copies from way back when guitars weren't made very well. Copy guitars weren't made very well. And uh, I thought it might be a fun video series to try and get something really, really bad like this, at least semi-playable. So there's a whole video series, as I say, refretting and changing the pickups, and you should see the pickups are in there originally. <laughs> Hilarious stuff. So I'm taking another look at this after uh, Will It Shred's done, I think, and we'll get that one playable again. But that's shite Paul, and he's dreadful. Absolutely rubbish. I don't know what happened to the bridge pickup. I don't know where that went. I must have taken it out for some reason, and... Uh, Oh, I don't remember. So that one's uh, that one's in need of some work again. But uh, yeah, that's Shite Paul and uh, did a lot for this channel. So thank you, Shite Paul. Now this is where we get into things that are a little bit interesting. This is the CS1. This is the very first guitar that I built. And I learned a lot from that process. Let's just say that right off. This is not the nicest build um, that's ever in existence. The guitar works fantastically because, uh, you know, you focus on the scale length and getting everything precise on the strings and the nut and the, everything else. But the it's the finish quality, it's the, the wood finish quality, which isn't the best. Neck's wonderful. Absolutely love the neck. Um, body and the headstock are a bit of a mess, but 
the essential parts of the guitar play very, very well. And as I say, for a first effort, it turned out uh, really well. Because I didn't have any formal <laughs> woodworking training or guitar building training. I didn't have any luthier courses. I just decided I'm going to buy a whole bunch of tools, a whole bunch of wood, and just give it a shot. So the fact that I get anything out of it at all is uh, remarkable, and I think... Um, you know, worthy of some praise. It's got some bare knuckle pickups in it, it's a painkiller in the bridge, and oh, do you know what? I think it might be a sinner in the neck. I might have to check that one. I cannot remember, but it's a very hot single coil anyway. Three way selector switch, a little push button kill switch there as well. Volume tone, uh, it's strung up with some really heavy strings. I used this in the band and we were down tuning, uh, so it's got heavy strings on it. And I played this one, gigged this one, threw it up in the air, did a whole bunch of stuff with it. Again, another solid roadworthy guitar. I didn't mind it being a bit uh, rough and ready because it was just going to get beat up and it's full of dings and dents and throwing it about the stage. So, yeah, I, I this was a big step for me, this guitar. As much as it's not the prettiest thing out and, you know, I've done better since, this is where it started with it comes to, to building guitars. So, yeah, I need to get back to this one and get it up to standard really, you know, bring it up to, to current standard. But that's that's my little baby and that's where it all started. You know, after CS1 the bug hit and this was the next guitar that I built. Actually, this piece of wood for the body was originally for the CS1 but it was a flawed piece of wood as you can see on this end. I'll give you some close-ups. It's all cracked right the way through when I started the bandsaw through it. it started fall apart. So this bit of wood sitting, I was like, what am I going to do with it? Oh, I'll just throw together another guitar really roughly as sort of a prototype. And this is what this is. It's sort of a Les Paul Jr. styled instrument, bolt on neck, maple neck, uh, carved top. And I just wanted to go for something a bit punk and a bit rock and roll and wrap around bridge, one P90 pickup uh, that I wound myself. And it's got some Goto tuners on it. Again, just a very basic, very stripped back, no frills, black instrument that you could just, again, throw about and, and it wouldn't really matter. And again, this was a bit of a learning experience. I wanted this to be, you know, try some new things and if it didn't work, fine, it's okay, it's only a prototype guitar and it's not a serious endeavour. So there's a few things on here that could have been done a hell of a lot better than they were, uh, but it got me it got me in the, in the mindset for how to do it in the future and that's the important part of it. Uh, so this is, again, just something that's... I don't play it too often, and there are a few issues with it, but again, plays well and sounds great because that's where you focus on. It's the only guitar I got with a, with a P90. It's good to have one. Around about the same time that I was building that previous uh, Les Paul Jr. styled one, I was building this, and again, I don't have a model name for this, I've just been called the Ash Fossil up until now because it's an ash body guitar, and it's got the Ammonite Fossil inlay on the fretboard. It's, a, as I say, ash body, one piece ash body, big, solid, really chunky piece of ash, uh, bird's eye maple neck and fretboard, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. My intention with this was to build it and then maybe try and sell it, uh, but I fell in love with it and decided, no, nope, sorry, this is my guitar. Little Blonde Beauty, this is the first time I've gone for any maple fretboard stuff, and I'm now in love with maple fretboards, so I think guitars in the future are maybe going to have maple fretboards for me. So the build quality on this one is a remarkable step up from the previous two, um, although still not as perfect as I'd like it. It's still learning at this stage, but considerably better, much, much better. Actually happy to show people this guitar and uh, play it. And you've seen it in a lot of videos. I play this an awful, awful lot. My pickups in here, Super 10, in the bridge position, and I believe I called this the Kelt single coil, and the neck, three-way selector switch, volume tone. It's got the Scala Hands uh, bridge, same as the CS1 did, and it's hip shot locking tuners on there. Hip shot locking tuners are just the best locking tuners, and you'll start to see that um, across some of the things that I do. Another hand-built guitar, solid construction, love it, sounds great, play it all the time. It's my go-to guitar for pretty much everything. Absolutely love it. And then there is this beauty, this is my Bloodbound 2.0, this is the most recent build, 2016 is what it says in the back of the neck, so that's when it was completed, though I think it was maybe a year more in, in the production. This represents really good build quality, this is me actually learning what the hell I'm doing with <laughs> building guitars. Um, is it up to the same standards as refined from more professional builders? No, there's still a couple of things that I, I need to sort of iron out in my building. But this is much, much better. It's very minor issues that are now wrong with it. Again, very minor finish issues. 
Um, so it's just a case of, of, of learning that stuff. But really, absolutely gorgeous guitar and plays exceptionally well. This is... Oh, I'm going to just gush about this one. The body is a big chunk of ash. I think it was a big chunk of ash that was left over from the ash fossil. And a couple of indigbo wings, which were left over from a, a different build um, for someone else. So that's how I got the size of the body. Uh, so ash and indigbo to fill it out there. And the top of the guitar is a madrone bar top and it's got a gorgeous figuring and we'll see if I can get that on camera it looks so much better in real life than it ever ever does on camera I cannot get it to camera to capture just how beautiful uh, that top is and it's got wenge uh, binding all around the body as well I went to a lot of effort with making this look very very nice uh, wood wise and gave it a sort of dark red uh, stain because it's it is blood bound it's got to be a blood colour. Uh, it's got one of my own pickups in here, it's a Super 10 but this is one of the hex poles to get a bit more of a metal look. It's a hip shop bridge and again hip shop locking tuners, these are the open gear versions which I think are just fantastic especially for weight reduction on the headstock. Wonderful beautiful stuff and again it's got the fossil ammonite inlay on the fretboard there. This is a Zircut fretboard uh, which is a hard very hardwood, sounds a lot more like maple, uh, but looks darker, which is nice. Uh, and it's a flame maple neck, it's a very in light flame on there. It's a beautiful guitar, and it's I'm very impressed with how I put it together and how well it came out. And uh, if I'm ever building guitars in the future, and I hope to do some more, I hope they turn out this level or above. This is just beautiful, plays really well. The neck's quite wide and still quite fat. Maybe I could have made the neck a bit bit thinner for uh, better performance but I like how it fills out the hand I kind of like thicker necks now I've sort of gone towards um, a bit thicker necks but yeah wow the Bloodbound 2.0 absolutely gorgeous and I love this thing and again you'll see me playing this quite a lot in videos because I can't I can't put it down <laughs> And most recently, the guitar that's come into my collection is the Sigma Guitars Electro Acoustic with the Fishman Isis Plus pickup in it. Now, I needed a decent acoustic guitar. I did have a cheap, cheap Yamaha thing before this one, but I thought, yeah, I need to do some videos, I need to do some acoustic stuff. You bought the hell, go and get myself a, a cheap but decent quality uh, electroacoustic guitar and this is it. It only cost me something like £250 in British money. So it's not an expensive guitar but it's solidly made and sounds really good. Uh, you know, it's punching well above the weight um, that it should be at that price point and uh, yeah, I've, I've been playing this a lot. It's been really really good and I got a capo and I got you know, a whole bunch of stuff to go along with it. Uh, so that's my that's my acoustic guitar, and that's what I'll be using if there's any acoustic stuff that I'm doing. Uh, I highly recommend checking them out, actually, uh, Sigma stuff, because, you know, low cost, but actually really well made. Uh, and they sound good. And finally, just to round this whole thing out, I thought I'd introduce this, a Squire uh, bass guitar. I don't even know what model of bass guitar this is, uh, but it's a Squire one that looks very nice with the black and red. Burst. Now this, I, I, we got this one, I say we because it was me and my brother both bought it. I think he paid for it actually. Um, it's his bass guitar, really. Uh, I think I had the Xyphus at the time, so it was round about that sort of time that we picked up the bass guitar so we could play instruments together. And he never really kept up with the bass guitar, but he does play keyboard and uh, sings and does all that sort of stuff. He's musical in other ways. Great composer is my brother. So yeah, it's a, it's a Squire bass. It's again Squire, so it's very solidly constructed. Um, a lot of people have played this bass, but have lent it out to people so they can get through shows and whatnot, and they've all come back and said that they really like it. Um, they say it looks great and sounds great, so it's a nice bass. It was, wasn't, again, not very expensive because it was Squire. I have upgraded the bridge to a Wilkinson uh, bridge there with the brass saddles that made everything sound a bit louder and brighter, which was good. I've also uh, upgraded the pickup and the bridge, the jazz pickup there. I took it apart and rewound it and put new magnets in it and whatnot. So I, it's a custom uh, bass pickup. And I meant to do the same with the P pickup. As you can see, there's a space there. I've never got round to it. Uh, the P pickups are sitting there. I need to take them apart, rewind them, and, and put them back into the guitar. Uh, but that's the bass guitar that I'm using for all the, the stuff that I'm doing, so there are bass tracks on any of the stuff I'm putting out. This is what I'm using, plus a whole bunch of post-processing and, uh, and plugins and, and all the rest of it. But this is the bass guitar. Um, I'll maybe get a better one at some point in time. 
but this is doing me all right for the moment. Really, I just want to get the notes into the computer and then do the rest of it from there. But hey, it works well, plays well, and um, it's a classy little looking bass guitar. Oh yeah, and of course, Will It Shred is still about and still things are happening to it. I've recessed the bridge now. So, <laughs> we need to put that back together, I need to film all of that. So, uh, yeah, another Will It Shred's coming soon. But you'll know all about this guitar, you've seen the series. Go and click the series, watch the series, and that's how you can learn all about this guitar. So that's the guitars in my collection currently. I hope that's been insightful for you. And as you can see, there's nothing fancy in here and there's nothing that you haven't seen. Uh, certainly nothing ridiculous expensive or wonderful. I like to keep it simple. Uh, recently I've just been building my own guitars and playing my own guitars because then I can get what I want. <laughs> and really, I like the sound of them, I like how they play. So, hey, that's really what it is. But anyway, that's all for just now. Please do subscribe if you want to see more content. Patreon's also there for exclusive secret stuff. If you want to support me and there's other videos you've probably not seen. But that's all for just now. If you want to keep it loud, I'll see you later.